Welcome to an overview of the Intellitech Benchmill 6000 series. Let's take a look at the left side of the machine first. Um, up here at the top you can see that I have a set of terminal blocks uh, for my 24 volt accessories. The only one that I actually had to plug in was my pneumatic vise. Um, everything else really is already done. Even though it says shield, shield opener, shield closer, um, that must be plugged in internally. So I kind of just follow the, the layout or the labels that are on the wire. Uh, my yellow one went over to the common or my negative 24 volt. I had two of them that went over to the positive 24 volt and then I had my signal wire that went over to the clamp. So that's the only one that I actually had to plug in. Um, the inputs and outputs, you have four 24 volt inputs and four 24 volt outputs. You also have two AC power ports. Um, one's labeled here for the PC power and one for cooling power if you had um, some type of cooling system. You also have an Ethernet port. This is how your machine will communicate with your computer. Um, so your computer actually acts as the controller and it's done through an Ethernet cable. Uh, here you can also see that I have plugged in the optional jog pendant. Um, if that's something that you purchase, it just plugs in here. And then you have your main power on and off. Let's go ahead and take a look at the right side of the machine. So as you can see, there's not really that much on the right side of the machine. And the only reason I have anything at all is because I do have the pneumatic vice option installed. And when I added this option, I had to install the panel. And I don't know if your machine will come with it installed or not, but it came with all the hardware and the installation was pretty straightforward. So while we're here, let's go ahead and look at the plumbing for it real quick and then we'll move on to the rest of the machine. So if you take a look here, this blue line that's coming out of the back of the machine, this is or was the main supply line. So where my air would have come into the machine, either from a compressor or your air source. The installation kit did come with a supplied T so I could split the line and connect everything together. So this line here now comes in from my air supply and right now mine's a compressor. Um, so this line over here goes to my air regulator and this air regulator actually only controls the air pressure of the vise itself. And here you do have a double acting solenoid. Um, that's what controls the machine. And this wire here, that's the one that went over to the left side of the machine that I had to wire in. So this is what's controlling the solenoid that opens and closes the air vise. And this regulator here allows me to control the pressure or the clamping power of the air vise. There is actually one thing that I want to note about the machine. Um, if you're using a compressor as your supply of air for the machine, I highly suggest at the end of each day that you actually disconnect the two. The concern has to do with when your compressor's pressure drops low or to zero, then while it's attempting to charge back up the next day, when you turn it on, there's not enough instant pressure to seal this valve. Um, and there's actually two of these regulators, one here for the double action vise and another in the back for everything else. So if it doesn't receive a shock of air, um, then it won't actually close or seal off. And then when you're charging the compressor, it'll just keep bleeding out air from these ports and the compressor will never charge up. So you need to make sure that the compressor is charged up to, I don't know, 80 PSI or so before you actually connect it to the machine. And that's so that it can actually seal off these two relief valves and then fill up the rest of the machine. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the back of the machine. So on the back of the machine, you can see that I do have an access door to a maintenance panel. Um, so if I go ahead and open that up, we'll take a closer look at that. Here you can see that I do have two double acting solenoids. Um, the one on top for me just happens to be for the pneumatic door and the one on the bottom is labeled as catch tool. Uh, that must be for the pneumatic drawbar. I can also see that I have three flow control valves and another pressure regulator that must be for the door and the drawbar. I haven't had to mess with any of this so right now it's all still sitting at its factory settings. So this is actually your main supply line, and this is the line that I split it into uh, for my single acting air vise. Um, but again, I don't remember having to mess with any of this or hook any of it up. It came this way from the factory. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look inside the machine. The only thing to really call out here on the front of the machine is they do have an emergency stop up here at the top. If I go ahead and press the emergency stop, um, you can see right now that it doesn't actually turn off the machine or the light that's inside. Um, all it does is stop the CNC machine itself. And then to undo the emergency switch, I just twist it clockwise. 
until it pops back out. Let's go ahead and take a tour of the inside of the machine. Um, one thing you may notice is this big green button here. This is what controls my pneumatic draw bar, and the draw bar is what pulls your tool um, up inside the spindle. So as you press this button, it'll actually release the tool. So make sure before you press the button that you're actually gripping and holding on to the tool. So as you push it, it will actually exhaust air through the solenoids and release this. And then all I have to do is press my new tool up, seat it inside, and then let go of the button, and it will do the rest of it as it pulls it up into the spindle. I do have a flexible LED light that I can point and shine on my material. I have a one-shot oiling system that all you have to do is pull it back and let it go and it will completely oil all the ways for you. Um, I have my pneumatic air vise here that I've already ran through the same port that they ran all of their tubing through. And if you remember from the back, the one that had the orange tubing, for mine that just happens to go to the draw bar itself. Um, and that's really it for the inside of the machine. I have the control of the draw bar, I have a light, I have my one-shot oiling system, and currently right now I have my vise, which we'll show you how to install in another video. So that's really it for the tour of the Benchmill 6000 series.